given unto us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. I want you to turn to your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 7. Can you imagine the, the play that was done here? The, the, thank, thank you for your involvement. And uh, that it was uh, a picture that way back then, over 2,000 years ago, that was a picture of the reality of the Son of God that was welcomed into on this earth for us to be able to experience salvation in our lives. If it wasn't for that historical event that took place, none of us would be here today. Amen. None of us. We'd be lost. We'd be out there. But thank God for His mercy that He has given to us. I've been talking about the light that we have been come into, and uh, and but I'm going to talk to you that we are to walk in the last few Sundays. But today I'm going to talk to you about the true light. The true light that has come. Isaiah prophesied about 700 years ago. 700 years ago, he prophesied of the Son of God. And there's other prophets. We, only, we don't have time to read those other prophets, what they prophesied of, of the Son of God. But there are about, I think it was about 300, 350 prophecies that were given that have been fulfilled of the Son of God. And it's amazing how people still don't believe Jesus. And you got prophets that, were, that spoke these things out hundreds of years ago. And, we do, and, and you can still have people living their own lives. That's, that's amazing. That's the reason why we're going to have those that don't receive Jesus are going to have a high accountability. There is no excuse. There's proof after proof after proof of the prophetic events that have for, been fulfilled of Jesus, the Son of the living God. And we read here in Isaiah chapter 7 verse um, verse um, 14 therefore look, he said this therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign behold the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel Emmanuel what does Emmanuel mean what God's with us and you look at Isaiah 9, 6, it says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, Amen. of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Amen. You turn over to Matthew chapter 1. You find here of the account that took place in Matthew. Where you find where, do you remember when... Um, the impregnation of uh, Mary. She wasn't married. Mary wasn't married. <laughs> and the thing is that she was engaged with Joseph. And Joseph found out she was pregnant. And he was going because the Bible says he was a just man. And he didn't want to put her to a public example, you know, or a public display. Because, I don't, I don't know about the, you, but I still believe what the Bible says. Amen. I know today, 20th century, 21st century, it is so prevalent that people, we often get pregnant out of wedlock and all that. It, it's, not, it's not that anything wrong with the child whatsoever. It, it's just the act out of turn. But now because it's happening so often, it's well accepted. But it's still Bible where this man, Joseph, was a just man. 
and he was a man of dignity and he didn't want to expose his the wife to be as a matter of fact as I was reading it part of the historical event he did is that he was going to put her aside in other words the what do you call it the uh, the engagement was going to be off but he was going to hide her until she had the baby all right now today it's like here here it's it's in your face so what so what God still loves me wow really I mean if you made the act so what if you made the act it happened the thing is we need to come back to repentance we need to come back to acknowledge well God I did make a mistake I did mess up so I'm really sorry I'm really sorry we, we can, when the baby comes we celebrate the baby it's a life okay it's a life but it doesn't make just cause of the act that it's okay because we're training our young people today our youth today they are watching the adults they're watching Hollywood they're watching all this stuff out there that's taking place here Jesus came he came to bring holiness to us now it's not the celebration that Jesus okay Christmas is here we exchange gifts but you know what the greatest gift not the gift the gift exchanging has come because of man but really the greatest gift is the gift that God has given to us for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to give us eternal life and in turn you know what the greatest gift that we can give back to him is what it's our love it's our life our life committed to him and what we have been called to live we have been called to live uprightly before him now now God, uh, the angel came to Joseph and he told him, he goes, don't do that. Don't put your wife aside or don't put your, your wife to be aside. Okay, I, I want you, I want to explain something to you that this, what she's impregnated with is the son of God and he's going to save the people from their sins. All right. And it is also a fulfillment of what Isaiah said that would happen Amen. and so therefore it goes to say and behold a virgin in verse 23 shall be with child and bear a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel which is translated God with us okay now before in the Old Testament God had to deal them with them from heaven from the outside in the Old Testament, they couldn't get born again. But in the New Testament, we get to be born again. Amen. Okay, now, he no longer deals with man from the outside. He deals with man from the inside. And the purpose of getting on the inside of our lives is to transform our hearts. So we no longer, the moment we confess Jesus as our Savior, that we are no longer to live the way we always lived and to walk the way we've always walked and to talk the way we've always talked. Because if the world looks, what kind of a witness are we if we still act the same way, if we still talk the same way, and if we do that in front of our kids, what kind of testimony is that? Really? And yet, and if you really love your kids, you don't want your kids going to hell. But if you don't care, you'll talk any way you want to talk. You'll act any way you want to act. And that's because you don't love your kids. Right? Praise the Lord. If, if, it, if some of the stuff that I'm going to minister to you today uh, ministers to you, just repent. Just say, ouch, and repent. 
But repent doesn't mean says, oh, the momentary repentance. I'm sorry, I realize it, and then continue to walk the same path. It don't mean anything. Because if you walk in the path, that same path, it is a path of destruction. It leads to destruction. And you may open up the door for somebody else to go to hell, but you also go along with them. Wow, this is not a very popular message. <laughs> But it's truth. Okay, it's truth. Now, the thing is, is that you look at all the prophecies that took place of Jesus. That he was coming. He was coming. You know why? We needed a Savior. Jesus, God knew that we needed a Savior. We cannot save ourselves. I don't care how much you try to do good, you keep messing up. And then, you know, some people say, well, you know, we're always going to mess up. Well, you know what? That's our cop-out. Because that's the reason why God knew we'd always mess up, but we need His help. So that's why when you get born again, He comes into your heart to help you by way of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Now, God never does anything without speaking it first. Judgment never came until it was spoken out. Noah spoke the word. Gets, come on, get ready, get ready, get ready. Because judgment is coming. They laughed at him. They mocked at him. And the Bible says they, they continue to, get, to give, to have marriages and party down. What goes on today? The church is declaring the gospel. And you know what people do? People come and go as they choose. That is going to end pretty soon. How many Christmases have you been? I've been, I've been to us umpteen Christmases now uh, that I've experienced. We're not, you know, there's a good chance some of you younger folks are not going to experience all the Christmases that I have. It's just the way the world's going right now. It's coming to an end. We're coming to the grand finale. We need to wake up. Well, I'm going to serve God. You know, it's easier to serve God if my, if my wife cooperates or if my husband cooperates or if my children get saved and cooperate. No, it'll be easier to do that. No, 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 no. You better do it. Somebody in the family better get in there and move in there with God so God can use you to minister to your family. Amen. But if you all close down and don't do it, then God is on the outside. You can say, I love God, but He's far from you. And not that He is literally far from you, is that He's so far from you in your experience with Him. That's why you can come to church, and when, you, and when it's time, let's worship God, you can go, Son of God died. His blood was shed for you. <coughs> He loves you so much. He forgave you of all your sins. His mercy is, endures forever. His mercy is extended to me. His grace is there present for me. He loves me unconditionally. Yeah, yeah. We can actually do that as humans. Really. And don't bat an eye, but yeah, you can see and watch on television, watch all of your movies. When you get in trouble, because you will be. When you get in a fix in your life, and you're facing life, and the reason why oftentimes people want to take their lives, you know why they want to do that? It's because they've ignored God. Because you know why? You find out that there's nothing out there outside of God. Nothing. Nothing. It's empty. It's zero. And if you're trying to live life without God, since life is zero, you become zero. And that's not what Jesus died for. Jesus died for us to give us value. To, to lift us up, out of zero, and uh, value. 
Praise God. Amen. There ain't nobody on the face of this earth that can give you value. Your husband, your wife, your children, the things you possess can never give you value at all. But yet we put a demand on them. I don't know. I remember. I used to do the same thing with my wife. Put a demand on her. I don't put that demand on her anymore. I'm here to serve her. In fact, the other day I said, because God's just moving in my life. You know, God just keeps on changing us. I like it. He keeps changing us. I come to her. What can I do to make it easier? What can, what, can I, what can I do to help you? What can I do? You know, is there something? Oh, could you do it? I says, yeah, just ask me. Let me tell you. Men are sometimes... You know, we're one trackers. And we don't see things. We don't see things that women see. Okay? But then we use that excuse. Well, you know, I'm a man. I don't see those things. Go ahead, take care of it. No, 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 no. Really. What I always, what I ask my wife, I said, tell me. Because I really don't see it. Tell me what needs to be done. Okay, this, that. Okay. Okay, I'll do that. And then when she asks, she goes, well, I don't want to, I really want to bother you. No, no, no. I want to do it. Now before, she says, oh, I don't want to bother you. I said, okay. <laughs> you know, I may not say that, but my actions did that. And I come to find out as God begins to move in me, he says, look, at, look, look who I gave you. Look what she's doing. Look what she's doing in your life. You know what you need to do? You're supposed to be servants with one another. You're supposed to be a team. You're supposed to be on the same, on the same team, working the same thing. I really truly believe that if you do that and you get your act together, together, and become a team, God will prosper you. I'm not talking about it. Praise the Lord. Come on, give him praise. God, God, will also, God will prosper you not to experience the peace because that's prosperity right there in itself. Peace in your home. Less conflict. But God, it'll get onto the monetary system. It'll get on you physically. You will, you will start getting favor. Money will come in. I really truly believe the reason why there's poverty is because there's spiritual poverty. Amen. And so we go and we reach out and we get help and, and we depend totally upon the government to help us out instead of losing that as, as, as something to get us on our feet so we can start moving out in what God's purpose is for my life. Because what God's purpose is in my life is to prosper me. That's his purpose. Prosperity doesn't mean you struggle. Prosperity means that you have enough, but also more than enough. Because it is. He's in abundance. It's in his name. God is more than enough. Now you tell me, that's a testimony in itself. When people see God, see God blessing you, and, and you're being blessed and blessed and blessed and prosperous, what if people are going to say something, and you're going to say, because you know what? My wife and I, we serve God. We're on the same team. We serve God. You come in our home, you'll find peace in there. You come in there, there's peace in there. My mother lives with us. And let me tell you, I don't think that she's ever seen us get into anything. And it's been going three years or more. I says, we're bold enough to have her. We're there with her. Okay, what is that? He says, sometimes some people say, well, you know, we're married. You know, we get into it. We get into fights and stuff like that. No, we may have some disagreements, but it's not an all-out fight the way it used to be. Why? You mean, oh, well, that's just because, you know, you, you just, you're just Robert and Hazel. No, 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 no. Uh -uh. It's because God promises something. He promises peace. And see, so when something's going to go into a conflict and it's going to be a problem, what I need to do is, okay, we're not going to deal with that problem. We need to back off from one another because we're getting ready to say some, th some stuff that we're going to regret. And I used to be the kind of person that I'd follow her into the room. Some of you may be the other way around, but I'd follow her into the room because I'm going to this settled right now. <laughs> Don't walk away from me. I want this settled right now. But see, I was so upset and, up and emotionally there that, you know, she, it, it would just override her. And so she couldn't even think. She just wanted to get away. And I said, no, I want to do it now. <laughs> you were that way? Yeah. 
I was that way. I'm not that way anymore. Because that never went good. I'm not that way anymore. Because so then when she would not deal with it, not talk about it, and then if she would start to talk about it because I forced it, then I didn't like what she said, and then so I get into get on her again of that. And it's like, wow. You were ugly, huh? Yeah, I was. <laughs> I was so ugly, I didn't like me. And, and, and so I reached out for somebody to, take, to help me change that ugly. And see, nobody else could do that for me. I even reached out to some pastors, and, and, and my pastor, even at that time, my pastor, and I tried reaching out, not the one I have now, it's the one when I was, before I was in ministry. And, and my pastor was there, and I, it couldn't, I, couldn't, I couldn't get help. So I had to reach out to the great pastor. Uh, and we just read that he's a mighty counselor. He's a wonderful counselor, mighty counselor, the everlasting father. You know, that's what we read. So you know what? I treated him that way. And God, you're the mighty counselor. And there's people that don't understand what I'm going through. And there's some pastors just don't understand, the ones I was hanging around at that time. Uh, they, they, don't, they don't understand because a lot of them were just religious. And, and they were just maybe born with a silver spoon in their mouth. I don't know. But anyways, I just was I was just struggling and they couldn't understand it. As a matter of fact, I probably couldn't even put it into words and stuff because I, could, I didn't know how to communicate my emotions and what I felt. That's the reason why anger was there present. So I just showed my anger and after that, I'd be all right for a few months. You know, I'd be calm and, and all. But the thing is that, hey, I go a long, a long time without being angry. But what it is, oh, boom, I just come up and get angry again. Why was it I get angry? Because, you know, I, I prided myself in the times I wouldn't get angry and then I would get angry and, and what happened is that is because I was frustrated I put down I put down things put down things put down things and then finally I, I just had enough I've had enough and that was it and then I'd say you know what you woman you always push my buttons I'm trying to help somebody here wow. you always push my buttons yeah I blame her you know what's a woman woman you gave me right you, you always push my buttons you seem to push my buttons I get along with people but you always push my buttons and so since you push my buttons I, it's on now and she goes, well, I don't want to talk about it. No, it's on now. <laughs> Man, really? I'm hoping I'm ministering to somebody here. Amen. You know, I says, but I tell you, have I done that now? No more. It's gone. It's gone. See, that man was an old man that was having a hard time trying to die. He was trying to die. But you know he was trying to die? He was trying to die with his own strength. And you will always fail. You'll always fail. So you will always operate out of shame and guilt all the time. Shame and guilt. And because when somebody then made you, when somebody, it sounds like they're putting you down because you're operating with shame and guilt, you jump on them because you already feel bad about yourself and then they're, they're, they're just adding to it. But see, they don't realize it because they're frustrated too. But we are so selfish, we're not looking at their frustration, we're looking at our frustration. We're just full of selfishness that needs to be broken. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I didn't, pl I didn't plan on getting into a counseling session. <laughs> but nevertheless, you needed it. Now, God speaks words before things happen. Okay, so now, God spoke the word through the prophets. God spoke the word and to assure Joseph, go ahead and marry her. And he did. Read the scripture. He went and he married her. Okay, and they had the baby. But notice that Joseph never touched her sexually until she had the baby. Now, I know there's a religion that believed that Mary was a virgin from the very beginning all the way to the end. No, that's a lie. There's a whole big religion that believes that. I don't know why, how they pull, pulled it and made it into a lie. That's a lie. It is not the truth. That's why they had to get other Bibles. Because this is the truth. There is God, the, the angel told Joseph, marry her. He didn't touch her until the birth. And then what happened? 
guess what he had afterwards? He had brothers. Jesus had brothers and sisters. I don't know about you, but when you have kids, does that break your virginity? Huh? Come on now. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Okay. You know, and they put her as so holy. There was a person that I was reading about a while back. Actually went to heaven. God gave him experience of going to heaven. And they saw the Virgin Mary. And the Virgin Mary was pleading with people to that person. Don't worship me. Worship Jesus. He's the one. He's the Holy One. You know, and it's like, but you know what? You can have people that will come and experience heaven and even out of, out of, what do you call it, death? What do you call it, death, uh, death experiences? What's that called? Out of born, you know, experiences. And they come back. And you know what? People look at that and it says, it's a figment of your imagination. They just talk it away. It's just, uh, it, it's just, that's just in your head. Let, let's explain it. This went on, your brain did this, and your brain did that. See, that's the reason why Jesus, when he talked about the parable or not, uh, of that person, Lazarus, Lazarus that, that went to heaven, went to the, to, the, to the bosom of Abraham, and the rich man, he died, and he went to hell. And then when he was in hell, he became an evangelist because he was over there saying... He says, come on, come on, uh, tell them, tell my brother, send, send, send. And all of a sudden, he's still serving. Once, once uh, Lazarus, send, send Lazarus, you know, go send to tell my brothers that don't come in this place of torment. He goes, he goes, if somebody even, Jesus says, if somebody even rose from the dead, they won't even believe it. What is that? If they don't believe the scriptures, they're not going to believe if somebody rose from the dead. And it's so true today. Someone can actually be have blind eyes and there will be a miracle that God can heal their blind eyes so they can see again. And you will see skepticals in the midst of that congregation. Skepticals and still will not serve God. Why? Because they don't believe this. The power of this word. You look at the children of Israel. They saw miracles after miracle out in the wilderness. God took care of them. Over through almost 3 million Jews. For 40 years. Their clothes did not wear out. That's a miracle in itself. The, the, the food never, they, they always were fed. They always were, were, their thirst was quenched. Was not quenched. Was it quenched? Yeah, it was quenched. Their thirst was quenched. They were satisfied. And yet, all the old generation never made it to the promised land. You know why? Because seeing a miracle doesn't mean that the people will serve God. It just means this, that as long as selfishness is there present, they will always look as God as, God, I'm in trouble. Help me here. God, I need this. I need that. I need this, 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 this. But never serve God. That's how the children of Israel live. But yet you have the church today. The, the church. I'm talking about Christians. Sinners, they act the way they always act. But I'm talking about Christians. They go and say they're Christians. But yet they walk around selfish and only call on God when they're in trouble. Or their kids are in trouble. Don't do that. Why wait for trouble when you can arm yourself and be ready for trouble? Amen. Ready to defeat trouble and overcome it. That's why. Praise the Lord. That's the reason why it's recorded that Moses knew 
the ways of God, the children knew, knew the acts of God. So it's not the acts of God that does it to make you to serve God. It's the knowing the ways of God. Here are the ways of God. Hallelujah. Right here are the ways of God. If you don't pick this up, you do not believe what God says. If you don't read this on a daily basis, you will never have the faith to be able to overcome the obstacles that our country is going to get ready to come into. You think it's bad now? It's going to get worse. Yes. I'm just helping you out now. Yes. So therefore... God speaks those things that be not as though they were. So now watch. God called his God called light. And what happened? What happened? There was light. Why? Because God what? Because God spoke it. God up that's the only way that God operates. The only way. God always puts his word out there. We have all those prophets of Jesus and, and, that talked about Jesus. And then we go and look at John chapter 1 verse 14. And he says, and it says, and the word became flesh. Amen. Wow. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. Now John's writing this. And he says, we beheld his glory. The glory of the only begotten Son of God. That came with grace and truth. That word. See, that's why I say God means what he says. So if he says there's, there's going to be judgment, guess what's going to be? It's judgment. But God is a just God, and God doesn't measure our justice by what we believe. God measures justice by what he has spoken. Hallelujah. His word is righteous. It says in the scripture, that's why you need to know your word. It says the, the foundation of the throne of God is righteousness and justice. Hallelujah. That's how he measures our activity. Righteousness and justice. We've been listening to, my wife and I have been listening to a tape. What's the, what's the title of that? Huh? Imagine Heaven. I don't know if some of you got that book, but we got it in tape form. She got the book also. How many, how many tapes are there? Oh, the, it's a whole book. So we've already listened to one of them, and we're going to listen to all, going, all, going down to Southern California to see our kids, and then we're going to listen to coming back up again. But the thing is, that we only had a couple of tapes listening to, and it's like, it keeps eternity before you. If you keep eternity before you, then you will straighten out your life. But the reason why we don't straighten our lives out is because we're not eternity-minded. We're, we're, we're only earthly minded. We're only looking at what we have and what we don't got. And what we're concerned with here and we forget it. See, because if we were eternal minded, you know what the greatest things that many of them have experienced and they have documented, they have documented all these things before putting it in the book. Documented. And they put intelligent people, people, doctors, attorneys, and, and then checking it all out and it's totally foolproof foolproof of all these and they said is actually increased people have died and come back died and come back died and come back and they have the same time kind of account and then they have a very few percentage low percentage like maybe say some lies or say some stuff imaginary stuff I really believe those kinds of people is that God allowed them maybe to have that and then because they didn't know God and, and they're not serving God and give them an opportunity but those that are and those that turn their lives around uh, those are giving account. Many of them didn't give account at the beginning only because they thought people would think they're crazy and they wouldn't say anything until they pull it out of them. And they're given the same account of eternity. 
that's more real. As a matter of fact, eternity was first before this earth was. Uh, this earth was birthed out of eternity. And we're, we're so earthly minded. We're so temporary minded. Temporal minded. You think th this is all going to disappear. Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. So you better get this word in here. This is eternal. And one of the great, one of those consistent things that was so prevalent in heaven is love. Yes. The moment they came in contact, they couldn't even explain it. You hear different ones in the scriptures. You'll find those that had that. Paul the apostle, he went to the third heaven. That's heaven. First heaven is what we see. Second heaven is outer space. Third heaven is heaven. He says he went to the third heaven. And, and, and he says, I don't know if I was in the body or out of the body. He couldn't explain it. These people that have died and came back, they say the same thing. Can't explain it. All they know is when they come in contact with it, it's a love that totally wraps them up. You can actually feel it. So you know what really matters? And this is the message that was given to them. What really matters is this. Is that, is that it's not what you do for yourself. It's do you love? Let me tell you something here. Anger, anima animosity, resentment, negativity, holding grudges is not love. And if you operate that way, there is no presence of God's love. No presence. Now I understand that once I conquered, this doesn't mean I don't get angry. Anger is this. You know, I'm angry. But I'm in control. And let's talk about it. Let's express this. Let's get it out. Okay? Nothing wrong with that. Let's do something positive with it. But see what it is. Is that anger becomes wrong when you attack it. That's when it's wrong. It is now lo no longer operating out of love. The reason why I defeated anger in my life it's because I received the love of God and I can't help but my love, my love for people, my love for, it's all starting with my wife. My love for my wife, it just keeps increasing and increasing Amen. and increasing. Amen. I can't even, I can't even help it. I can't go, and try, I'm not even trying to, really. I'm not trying to do it. Oh, I, I got to love my wife. The Bible says I got to love my wife. No, no, I'm not trying. I tried that. It wouldn't work. <laughs> you know, I couldn't do it. But now it's like, yeah, I try harder. <laughs> no, that, that tells me this. We are so selfish. As long as we operate in selfishness, we'll never operate with God's love, ever. Right. Amen. Amen. See, because we come into a relationship to see, what can you do for me? But I, what ends up being is that somebody, somebody suffers and we lose our identity. And our identity is our love. Our love serves. Amen. And love doesn't look at it and says, okay, I served you this much. Your turn. No, no. That's not love. That's conditional. Yes. Oh my God. But all I do is just keep going to God. God, God, I want your heart. Give me your heart. Pour your heart into me. I want, you, I want to know you, Lord. I'm going to know you in a greater way. I want to know your ways. Lord, I want to be able to speak effectively to your people. God, I just... And then what happens, all, you just feel that, God, I don't want nobody going to hell. I don't want nobody going to hell. I don't want nobody going... Well, what is it? How come I'm feeling that? It's God's love. Because... because I've, he's putting his heart into me and so I don't want to, he doesn't want anybody to go there Amen. that's why yeah. see it's a it's a transformation it's not something that okay it happened this day and from that point on it was no 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 it just starts to happen you're just walking you're just walking in it you may tr you trip up but you just get up and walk trip up get up and walk see weak people 
are people that fall and stay down. And it's like somebody, oh, I messed up. I drank. Okay. Uh, oh, well. <laughs> I might as well just get drunk. You know, I messed up. No, no, no. That's weak people. Amen. When you make a mistake and you don't repent, that's weak. Amen. That's weak. And the enemy knows that. And he can play with you. Praise God. See, strength doesn't come. We're not strong because we're physically strong or able. No. -uh. Strength comes when you got a strong heart, strong spirit. You can have the weakest person physically, but a strong spirit. Praise the Lord. That is what God is developing in us. Praise the Lord. The Word became flesh. Well, we had this here. An example. The Word became flesh. That Word. They talk about it. See, God doesn't just talk just to talk. God talks with a purpose. And the purpose is I love my people. I love the world so much. Here, I'll give them my son. Okay, but he's going to have to become flesh. So all the word that I said, that word became flesh. And it says that in the beginning was the word in John 1, 1. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were created by him and without him, nothing was made. He was the light. And the light shines in darkness. And the darkness does not comprehend it. Guess what we were filled with? Huh? Darkness. darkness. What is the world filled with? You can get all kinds of education in your mind. All these books and all this degrees and stuff. And you still have a whole bunch of ones that have degrees are ignorant. Yes. And they're leading our country out of ignorance. Yes. And we're teaching us how to bow down to other gods. To compromise. And they're, and they're bowing down to the God of knowledge. The God of schools. The God of education. Say, so, wow, are you against education? No, no, I got some education. But the thing is, they put it above God. I can get all that education. But I still have to stay humble before God to get the education of heaven. You know what that's called? That's called the wisdom of God. Yes. Wisdom. Hallelujah. What's the wisdom of God? Knowing how to use knowledge. Correctly. Now, there was a man that was sent to represent Jesus. And this man, who was his name? Huh? John the Baptist. Okay? John. He came. And he came. Was he the light? No. He came to bear witness of the light. All right. Now, it says in verse 8, he says, He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which gives light to some men coming into the world. What? You mean I didn't read that correctly? <laughs> he gives light to just women. <laughs> Women's lib will go, yeah. <laughs> no, no. The true light was given to every man. That's women, women and men. Men and women, same. Coming into the world. Is there anybody here not in the world? Huh? 
How many here are in this world? Let me see your hands. How many here are in this world? Okay, that means your life, right? See, so now God, God gave you the opportunity to experience light. Because we were in darkness. When people say, I can help myself, how do you help yourself when you're in darkness? When some, you go into a dark, pitch dark room, you got furniture all around there, and you're walking in, and, and you're over there fumbling around, and somebody goes by the door and says, oh, let, me, let me turn on the light. Now, tell me how this looks. The person says, no, no, don't turn on the light. I can do it. I can do it. I don't need the light. I'll find what I'm looking for. You know, we laugh at that. But that's the way people are. That's what we're, we don't realize that we're in darkness, that we can't, we can't save ourselves. We can't change ourselves. But yet, people, we, the word is ministered and given to us over and over again and we said no 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 I don't need it oh no I just need a little bit of church I just need a little bit of church I don't need a lot of church uh, let me tell you something when God sets you free when God ministers to you in church and then you don't show up for two, three, four, five months, or weeks or months or something. And then you show up again. I'm not guarantee you something. You will be bound up again. See, because the light's turned on for you to be able to walk. But because you don't pay the light bill, <laughs> guess what happens? The light's turned off again. You see, because we were bought with a price, and what we owe is God our life. And we are to present our lives that no longer belongs. When once I got saved, I, and I was away from church for years, and I was raised in church, but I was away for it. Uh, what happened? I came to God. What happened when I came to God? I came to God, and I always came into church, and nobody had to tell me, ever, from this day forward. As a result, I became a mature Christian, a balanced Christian, and a Christian that has a purpose in their lives and is now fulfilling it. Amen. Praise the Lord. What else? What else are you going to, when are you going to get it? When are you going to get it? But as many, that's why it says here, he entered into the world, it says, and the world was made through him. But watch, and the world did not know him. Why? He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. That's why they wouldn't receive him. When you live your own life, you're not receiving him. But it says, but as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become sons of God, children of God. Amen. Even to them that will believe. To believe is just like, oh yeah, I believe God. No, you don't. To them, when you believe God, you will live what you believe. Amen. Otherwise, you don't believe God. When you believe, you will live, and everybody else will see what you live, and they will they would they would believe what you are saying, and they will hear what you got to say because they see it in your life. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. And so now, what are we called to do? We are called to walk in that light. And what I want to provoke you to do, starting this Christmas, 
provoke yourself to do the works of God and stop playing around because you know what the enemy is going to do the Bible says he's like a warring lion seeking whom he may devour he's going to he's he knows his time is almost up and he's going to go after it he's already got the center he's going after the Christian if you declare, if you declare yourself to be a Christian he's going after you you are on the hit list he's going out and you are no match to him if you're not walking in the ways of God when you're walking in the ways of God he's no match to you because the Bible says greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world so he's in the world I'm in this world but I'm not of this world I'm not subject to the things of this world I'm subject to the things of God's kingdom see this world can't give me the peace that I need it's only temporary and see the peace that I got is eternal I get to keep it all the throughout eternity starting with right now because the moment we received Jesus we started eternity eternal life with him right now you don't wait well, Jesus when he comes back I'm gonna start eternal no no you've already started it you've already started it and if you don't receive that you're already living not hell the only thing is hell it gets worse with heaven as you're living out heaven on earth it gets better so the Bible says this choose you to whom you will serve but as for me and my house we're gonna serve God Amen. stand to your feet hallelujah, hallelujah. thank you Jesus.